Namaskaram. Namaskaram to everyone. Hmm. <laughs> Particularly to all the little children who are sitting here through the darshan, a bit cold. <laughs> And every one of you, wherever you are. Well, it's too much feedback. Uh, we cannot ignore the realities in which we exist. That would be foolish. Unfortunately, Still, United States is leading in terms of both virus infections and fatalities. Nearly two thousand deaths in twenty-four hours. India is doing better. Most parts of India are doing way better, except a few cities where things are a bit out of control. Now, uh, they are brought in penalties and if you don't wear a mask in a public space, two thousand rupees penalty on the spot. Some states are also looking at a brief imprisonment for those who intentionally don't wear masks, that uh, <laughs> look at the amount of money you're saving on makeup. <laughs> uh, Europe also, virus raging, this time around more severely than the first time, only a few countries seem to be totally free, unusually free, for whatever reasons. Well, at least now it should be clear to us that it's not just going to go away, you can't wish it away, you have to push it away. You can't just wish it away, oh, it'll go away, it's not going away. Unless we consciously push it away, it's not going to happen. Well, as all of you know, vaccine updates, you know them. One company comes and says, uh, ninety-two percent efficacy, effectiveness. Another company comes and says, ninety-four point five percent efficiency. So this ninety-two percent efficiency vaccine company next day declares their vaccine is ninety-five percent. <laughs> I hope you don't fall in that crack of three… three and a half percent <laughs> So, uh, vaccine is good, it will solve many things. But still you should not think it's some kind of a magic wand. It's not… it's not a magic wand. Still responsible behavior, conscious behavior will be vital. Well, once the uh, vaccine is out, you will see a different level of irresponsible behavior from many people trying to grab it. So I was on a, you know, technology summit that was happening in India on the, you know, on, on the online platform. So I said, I will be the last person to go for the vaccine, let everybody be done, those who are in a rush. I'll wait. This will create a whole lot of dynamics in the society. Those who have the means and money, they will try to manipulate it in so many ways so that themselves and their dear ones get it first. But there are others who are in the front lines, like the medical personnel, 
so many others who are doing various kinds of service without which a society cannot run, well, they should get it first. And then there was… there are many, many people who will not be able to afford a vaccine. I think in United States, it's supposed to cost hundred and twenty dollars, am I correct? About hundred and twenty dollars, I think. Uh, it's a mind-boggling amount when you look at seven billion people. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of things will happen. So it's still extremely important that our conscious, responsible behavior, there's no substitute for that. There's no magic wand for these kind of situations. <coughs> Europe is ac accounting for nearly forty-six percent of the worldwide cases. But thousands of people are on the streets of Germany protesting. Even the Germans don't want to be disciplined. It's a new world <laughs> I think you Americans have infected the Germans with the idea of freedom. Freedom is a bad idea. It's a wonderful thing if you're free, but it's a bad idea when you try to enforce it. Because uh, just elogizing all kinds of individual compulsions will be projected as freedom. It's my freedom to eat what I want. It doesn't matter, I'm filling the whole couch. It doesn't matter, I am making the nation go towards the highest possible medical bills that any population can generate, 3.25 trillion dollars for 350 million people is a crime. It's a crime against humanity, I want you to know <laughs> So. Uh, this idea of freedom has made people behave in stupid ways. If you're free, it's a fantastic thing, there is no substitute for that. But just the idea, I want to be free and I am free kind of thing, makes you do all kinds of compulsive things in the name of freedom. So when the vaccine arrives, all of you, who I believe is reasonably conscious and responsible, you should not rush up, wait, let all those people who are in a hurry be done with it, okay? Hello? I'm going last, you can go before me <laughs> But there are other things to do with which uh, you can manage these things. One simple thing is, In the Indian yoga center in Coimbatore, we've changed the name now, Kowai. Yes, you can't call that city Coimbatore anymore, that was an English name. There is a more complicated name that even I cannot pronounce. <laughs> the shorter name in Tamil is Kowai. I think it'll be easier for all of you, Kowai. So in the yoga center, the day starts with a small marble-sized ball of neem and turmeric. There are many aspects to this of what impact it has on your system. But first of all, the neem tree, which is generally all over India. Today probably being grown in another 
ten to twelve different geographical locations around the world, but originally by nature indigenous to Indian subcontinent. He is one of the most complex leaves that you can find on the planet. It is supposed to have uh, over one hundred and fifty complex chemical patterns within it. Well, I am not a… an expert in chemistry. I… right from my… I did only chemistry in school. Uh, let me not tell you all the details because they're children, they may learn, you know, quickly. <laughs> but I rarely went to the chemistry class, but I loved the practical lab. We have poured anything into anything and just saw what happens. <laughs> we discovered many things, but we did not document those discoveries. So I cannot uh, talk about the chemistry of the leaf, but they say it is probably the most complex leaf that you can find on the planet. But I can clearly tell you the impact of this leaf. <laughs> I give this guy the microphone. <laughs> this little guy, give him the microphone. Whoever talks must talk on the microphone here, okay? <laughs> so, uh, the impact of what it does to human system, well, to some extent we can say something about it. We can't grow neem in Tennessee. The Nature doesn't support that. But we could easily grow, grow this in Florida, I think people are growing it already. Can be grown in parts of Texas, maybe some parts of California, southern parts of California. That belt, you could grow. What does it do? There are both health aspects, energetic aspects and spiritual dimensions attached to this. Let us talk about health first because <laughs> it, it amuses me that <laughs> if you say something, I'm talking about the social media, not all of you. In the social media, if you talk about something very profound, very few people go for it. You talk about food, woo! <laughs> Sadhguru makes his own masala, oh, it hits a million views in twenty-four hours. <laughs> this is all they want. <laughs> I… I just thought what bad food they must be eating in their life. <laughs> just if I say masala, one million views, I didn't even teach them how to do the masala. <laughs> Just a video, they can't figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> but one million views. You say something very profound, how to get to your highest state possible. <laughs> ah <laughs> Social media has become a kind of a barometer to gauge human maturity <laughs> and human intellectual capabilities also. <laughs> and of course human vocabulary and language. <laughs> so the neem has health benefits to start with. 
those of you uh, who are just that kind of people, you can stop. I'm doing this in this order so that you can stop watching the video after two minutes when health is over and we are going for more profound things. <laughs> See, I'm market friendly <laughs> So if I speak health in the end, you have to, you know, fast forward all that, arrive at that, forward, backward, all these problems. So I'm just arranging it in such a way so that everybody is catered to <laughs> So about health, see the fundamental mistake that modern medicine systems have made is kind of absolutism about health that this is health, this is not health. Now they tell you, your whatever, whatever chemistry, blood chemistry must be this, this and this, then you're healthy. Believe me, most of you or many of you may fit into those parameters and still not be healthy. Because health is a certain reverberance, it is not an absolutism. You may be perfectly healthy right now, in ten minutes you may not be if certain things happen in the system. Well, ten minutes may look too much, by this evening you may not be healthy, it's possible. It's very much possible. This idea that you can define health as this is it, and you define it in chemical parameters and say this, 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 you're healthy, no. Many things can fluctuate within the system without you being unhealthy or many things can be stable without you being healthy. So having said that, what the neem does to your system? Well, in more tangible terms, one immediate thing it will do is, it will keep your alimentary tract clean. When we say clean, this is a region, this whole digestive process is a region where you have maximum amount of uh, other life. I don't mean to say ghosts and goblins because, you know, they're advertising this disembodied <laughs> But believe me, these microorganisms can do more to you than ghosts and goblins can do, much more. See, right now the virus, it's like a ghost, you can't see it. Hmm? Those who got infected, unfortunately those who lost their lives, did they see the virus coming tuk-tuk-tuk? No. It's not like a wild animal, it's not a tiger, it's coming at you, you can see it coming. Nothing like that, it's like a ghost, you can't see it. So within this elementary tract, there are a whole host of microorganisms. Many of them have turned friendly to us. We are living because of them, we are able to digest food because of them. Many, many functions in the body happen because of them. But still there are many who are harmful to us. The uniqueness of neem, especially when it is taken along with turmeric, if these two things go together, largely those things which are not necessary for the body, those things can… that which can harm the body, any kind of parasital life which is there, all these things get eliminated. A clean colon is very vital for health. If you go to see or consult any traditional doctor, like an Ayurvedic doctor or a Siddhavaidya or Eastern medicine largely, whatever your health problem, First thing is they will purge you because they want your colon clean. For your physical and psychological health, they want your colon clean. If you… <laughs> this is very difficult to uh, put it across to people today because uh <laughs> because uh, just about four days ago, I tweeted, saying that if you reduce fifty percent of meat consumption in your life, you don't have to give it up, 
fifty percent less if you eat, we will have twenty million square kilometers of land to plant trees on the planet, which can reverse the whole climate change nonsense in ten to twelve years' time. Oh my God, you must see the barrage against me, especially in India. Oh, they are accusing me of just about everything that can be done. Anyway, you know who they are, why they do these things, that's a different matter. But if you just become a little more conscious about how you eat, what happens in your body, what happens in your mind can be greatly influ influenced. See, if you build any structure, there is a design to it. There is an architectural design. But there is also a part where the quality of the material and the execution, efficiency of execution are involved. Just because the design is great, it does not mean the building will turn out great. The quality of material that goes into the making, and who makes it, makes a world of difference. That goes for this also. With this, the design is perfect. It took millions and millions of years to perfect this design. The whole evolutionary process took that long to arrive at this design. Well, you can still argue it could have been better, I could have had a horn, you know. I know you have improvement suggestions uh, because, you know, so much, uh, what to say, cosmetic surgeries are happening because obviously they have a better idea of design. <laughs> Lips should have been little more like this <laughs> and various other things. You have improvement suggestions, we can put it forth somewhere, let's see. But this design has been worked upon for millions of years and it's arrived at this place which is extraordinary design. But execution and the material that you use to build this is very important too. So what kind of food you put in, it's not just about your culture. Cultures might have evolved according to the survival needs of that place. Cultures in different parts of the world have evolved according to what was available in that place and uh, survival needs, how the economies were, what was happening, what was the main form of livelihood. Accordingly, cultures ev evolved. Cultures are never perfect. Unfortunately, people get super identified with this and think their culture is perfect. No culture in the world is perfect because the mess that you do in this generation is tomorrow's culture. Hello? And you think you're doing this mess very consciously? No, it's just happening, isn't it? Whatever rubbish you do today, next generation picks it up or rejects it and does the reverse of it, whatever. But it is a consequence of this generation's culture which breeds the next generation of culture. So culturally what you're eating is not the point. What goes best into this system? What is this machine designed for? What kind of fuel? Knowing this is very important. So if you look at this, look at it this way, keeping the body in a certain level of balance and efficiency of digestive process, very important. How much food do you need? to maintain the level of activity you wish to maintain in your life. We are talking about fuel efficiency for all our automobiles. You've seen the 1950s, 50s were a little better, 60s and 70s cars in United States. If you break down ten cars, you could build a battleship. <laughs> That's how much metal they used to build a car. Well, now they're getting sleeker and this, why? One important aspect is that fuel efficiency. To travel a mile, how much are you consuming? 
Well, we're thinking ecological terms, think in terms of your health terms. That is, to process, let us say, one unit of energy, how much food do you have to eat means that much excessive load on the system. So, if you don't have your own sense, every day in the morning if you eat a little bit of neem and turmeric on an empty stomach and drink some maybe tepid water, it will bring that sense to you because body will respond to food in a certain way. It will tell you when it's enough. You're not able to figure it out yourself, every cell in the body will speak. Because neem and turmeric together creates a certain excess to the cellular level that when you generate energy, how is it distributed? Well, uh, people have been asking me to talk, speak about internal combustion engine. So how distribution of energy happens, which in an automobile is called transmission, determines how efficient a vehicle is and how much fuel it consumes to generate the same amount of power. Power in the engine is one thing, power at the wheels is another thing, completely different. Today, the top racing machines in the world are just 2.7 liter, that's a cap they've set for the Formula Ones, but they're the fastest machines. Because power at the engine and power at the wheel, the loss is very, very minimum. Well, we have uh, pickup trucks here which generate 700 bhp at the engine, but what goes to the wheel is another matter. So there is something called as transmission. So what you generate in your stomach, where all does it go? To what extent does it go is a very important aspect which in today's world people are simply not conscious of. If you want to facilitate this, well, there are yogic practices, but even to assist that, this neem and turmeric can be a tremendous process because it facilitates that, that your transmission of energy is evenly across. And once you start noticing this, then by choice you can move your energies where you want. When I say you can move your energies where you want, right now, uh, <laughs> if I say this, people will uh, start imagining all kinds of things, so let me limit that. But anyway, right now, I want to speak. If I have my energies focused in my throat consciously, it may happen to a whole lot of singers and others just, you know, by natural, inter you know, inclinations. But if you're consciously there, you will see your speech will have a different kind of impact. If you look at something, if you move your energies to your eyes, not that everything, the dominance is in that place, then you will see your look has a power which everybody has eyes, maybe they're twenty-twenty. No, 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 I, I'm not talking about the year. <laughs> I mean to say the vision <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we must be careful about using this number, huh? Twenty-twenty means people go, So you may… your vision may be normal, but doesn't have the same power, will not grasp the same things, will not penetrate the same way. <clears throat> like this, there are various aspects. You want to do something with your hands, if you can have your energies focused in your hands, your touch will be another level of touch altogether. So if this has to happen, first and foremost thing is, the transmission of energy in the system is smooth. Neem and turmeric as a combination on an empty stomach does wonders in this direction, wonders. So those who are doing sadhana of some kind, for them it's very important. Well, neem, turmeric, where to get it? In the United States especially and in other countries, in India it's a possibility. 
Mm, this problem is there but uh, this is why those who are doing sadhana just for relief from backache or headache, uh, let them do Shambhavi, Shakti Chalana Kriya, it's good enough for them. Now we are in the process of uh, maybe I am announcing ahead of whatever the of official announcements were there, but uh, because this has come up, we will open up both here in United States in the Triple I and also in the Isha Yoga Center in India, where people who want to do lifelong sadhana, this does not mean twelve months of the year they have to live there, but they are not committed to weekend program, they are committed to lifelong program with necessary guidance and support, maybe needed accommodations and food and whatever is needed to create all that infrastructure so that we want thousands of people on lifelong program. Are you on? <laughs> because I've spent uh, this many years, initial eighteen, twenty years went into the making of Dhyanalinga. Last twenty years have gone into running the campaign in the world. Mm. Now a time has come in the next year or so, we'll come to a place largely, I will either be in Isha Institute of Inner Sciences here in Tennessee, or Isha Yoga Center in Kowai. <laughs> Largely I will be in these two places so that these lifelong sadhana people are properly guided, they eat the right kind of food, they live in the right kind of atmosphere, right kind of energetic atmosphere. If not for all the twelve months, according to their convenience, according to their professions and family and other commitments that they have at different stages in life, so that they slowly work towards a hundred percent involvement at some point, but they start working towards it, starting maybe with fifteen days, one month, two months, whatever they can. But their commitment for the program, their own program is lifelong because spiritual Sadhana cannot be done weekends, two weekends, three weekends, okay, those are introductions into it, but it has to be a lifelong process. So the necessary atmosphere, the necessary energy, the necessary support, the necessary inputs that go into your system, all these things need to be taken care of if you want to make something flower, you know. We would like to see at one time, I was dreaming, I've spoken about this before, I was dreaming we will create people in such a way, wherever you walk on the street, you will see enlightened people. Now, you know, I'm… Now I'm thinking at least a few hundred people before I go must happen. <laughs> Hello? What I'm getting… Uh, what… Uh, Am I getting practical or am I l losing my guts? What do you think? <laughs> anyway, this opportunity will be opened up in the next couple of months, we will announce exactly how you can engage in this, uh, that you enroll for a lifelong program and you have a place to stay and you have all the organization needed for yourself. Whatever you can afford accordingly, you do it. But the important thing is your commitment is for lifelong sadhana. The reason why everybody thought it is foolish of me to come and sit here in this remote part of Tennessee with nearly four thousand acres, they said, what are you going to do Sadhguru? Let's open a center next to Atlanta, just twenty-five acres, it'll be phew, great. Yes, it will be but it will not serve this purpose, which is the main purpose in our lives, that we want to see that next generation is not barren. We want to see some flowers blossoming. Yeah.
For this you need little neem and turmeric <laughs> That's not the only way but it is a very important part. What goes into your system, see right now if your stomach is doing good, 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 it is not saying you are good, when it does good, 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 it is saying it is not good what you've eaten. If it do, it's doing little good, 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 then uh, you know it may go with the drums sometimes. <laughs> when it's happening, if I ask you, no, oh, just be with me, close your eyes and just sit here. Not interested in enlightenment when stomach is beating a drum, isn't it? Hello? When everything is feeling good, yes Sadhguru, I'm with you. <laughs> huh? Oh, but to get you to that place so that everything is feeling good has been quite a… a pill <laughs> It's time that we create support systems where to make you feel that you are not an issue. Your body, your mind, your emotion, your thought are not an issue in your life, it should not be. Then we can deal with the real obstacles. Otherwise, we are fi fighting with illusory obstacles that we put up and we fight. The obstacles that we put up, we need not fight, this must be understood. We just have to bring it down. Hello? Somebody else puts up an obstacle, sometimes we will have to fa fight. But the obstacle that I've put up within myself, no need to fight with this, all I have to do is bring it down. So to bring it down, there are methods and possibilities but there's not been sustained effort from most people, so we are creating this possibility. Neem and turmeric will be served, probably we must buy a few acres in Florida and grow neem. Turmeric, no problem, it'll come <laughs> There are other dimensions to this, that is uh, if we use this neem and turmeric on an empty stomach, one aspect is it has the power to transform one dimension of energy within you to another in the sense. In the yogic culture this must be understood with proper perspective. The doctors say that if you consume excessive neem, it will destroy the sperm cells, which is good proof for what we have been saying for thousands of years. That is, see there are various kinds of cells. Today, modern science is beginning to recognize how significantly different they are. What is on your skin, what is in your bone marrow, what is in your sperm, what is in your brain, these are different kinds of things, almost like another life. Though there is a common thread of information in all of them, they're very, very different. And what it takes for the body to generate an epithelial cell and what it takes to generate a sperm, or what it takes to generate another cell, neurological cells are very different level of energy involvement with the body. Well, lot of people will question this, but they will arrive at it in another twenty-five or fifty years' time. Yes, I'm telling you. So one dimension of human life is, see I want you to understand the miracle, don't think about the sexuality of it, just with a single cell. Huh? Two, all right, but just with one single cell, you can ignite a new life which sits here like this. Is it a small thing? I'm asking. Because people are too sexually messed up in their head, they're not looking at the miracle of it. Just with one cell, just look at the way life has sprouted and what it's become. Isn't it so? We populated the whole world. We need to do something on that, that's a different matter. <laughs> So, uh, this is a record of sorts. In the last twenty-five years in the Isha Yoga Center, there's not been a single birth. In the last twelve years here in the Triple I, not a single birth, see? <laughs> so, 
So the neem and turmeric together has the power to break down the sperm cells and make it into another level of energy which is called as ojas. When every cell in your body slowly gets wrapped in ojas, if you're doing sadhana and your transmission is good and even across the body, when every cell in the body is encapsulated in ojas, when I say ojas, what is it? Show it to me. In my blood, blood work, they said no ojas. <laughs> All right, in your blood work there's no life also, I want you to know, there's only chemistry. Nobody ever proved that you're alive, hello? You have to prove <laughs> So, ojas will encapsulate every cell. Once every cell in the body is encapsulated in ojas, you will be a glowing human being. In every… in every… Uh, in every aspect of that word, you will be a glowing human being, within and without, you will be like that. This is something everybody needs to work at because this is not enlightenment. This is you created a platform upon which nothing can go wrong. Body and mind are platforms. How you function on it, what kind of dance you do on it is up to you. But having a perfect platform which doesn't throw you off is important. If you build a stage which is… Uh, sometimes I've… You know, I've been in all kinds of dioceses and stages. Uh, I… <laughs> I usually have the habit of running up the steps and I go to an event and book one… one… Uh, st uh, you know, one of the steps just given and my leg goes and gets stuck right here, up till here. So I'm saying I've been on various kinds of platforms, not everywhere is it this flat and firm. And it makes a world of difference if you want to move on this stage, how leveled it is, how firm it is, does it determine how easily you move upon this? Hello? That goes for your body, you need to understand this body is not the end game, this body is the platform. This mind is a platform. If you make it very energetic and stable, then exuberance and stability, people don't understand this, they think exuberance means freaking all over the place, stable means being dead. <laughs> to be exuberant and stable, if the platforms are like this, now you are free to dance whichever way you want. In this direction, neem and turmeric are very important elements. It's not that without it you cannot do, you can, but when there is support, why not use it? So there are many, many aspects to this in terms of both physiological and psychological health. So as I said, most people not able to manage these things in their homes, so we are seeing how to create a larger aspects. We are also working on how to deliver this neem and turmeric everywhere in the world on a monthly basis so that people can use it. The problem has been how to make it effective. Turmeric is not an issue, we can make that. But neem, how to r retain its effectiveness without adding any preservatives and chemicals to it, this has been a challenge that we are working on. I think we will crack this in a month or two. That's where we are right now. So, this is a possibility. One is about using something that supports you, another is using an atmosphere that will soak you in a certain kind of energy that your body, not like full body like this, every cell in the body should have ojas, the protective layer of ojas. Then you live disease free, you live trouble free, above all, you remain exuberant and stable at the same time. It's time to work for such human beings. The need for such human beings is becoming more acute than ever before. What do you think? The need for such human beings is becoming very acute, looking at the way others are developing, especially with chemical usage. With widespread chemical usage which is inevitably happening 
and uh, will rise further. It's not going to go down immediately because one by one states are going legal in various ways. It's not just about one thing. Uh, you know Oregon has gone legal with everything. So, once they go on this, their platforms will become so wobbly. Being wobbly, they're thinking they're high. Hello? If you become wobbly, you're thinking you're very high or feeling some great experience. Well, all we have to do is give you a vertigo. Hello? You will get it free, I'm saying. <laughs> you will spin all over the place. So, uh, I'm not trying to make commentary on that, but the important thing is, you will see human beings becoming more and more unstable as chemical usage increases. When I say chemical usage, we are not only those who are abusing drugs, those who are on prescription medications, those who are eating foods which are grown with, ex you know, excessive chemical usage. There is chemical in the air, there is chemical in the water, there is chemical... See, in World War I, they extensively used chlorine bombs. When they use chlorine bombs, canisters which let out chlorine gas, people drowned within their lungs. But today, you know, you have chlorine in your water. No, no, we are mildly poisoning you, that's all, don't worry, it's okay. We are not poisoning you to death, we don't believe in that because that's not commercially good. <laughs> we are poisoning you only to that extent where you... Hey, come on, it's your responsibility to be a good market <laughs> because this is market economy everywhere in the world, all right? So you have to provide the market, you must buy something. See now, if not… if you are not buying any uh, medicine, at least you are bu buying makeup. Now that is also gone, only your mask you're buying. At least, uh, see we will make a rule, every day you must wear a fresh mask. <laughs> so that every day you buy a mask. Somebody… economy has to roll, all right? Otherwise how? How do you run the world? So whether you want to be crushed by this economy or you want to ride this, it's your choice. Above all, what is your life about? This is something every human being has to look at. And this ability to look at anything is gone the moment you have become heavily dependent upon something. You cannot look at it. That's a good thing about Neem. It is not something that you will ever get addicted to. It is so bitter, every day you have to eat it consciously. <laughs> See? Consciousness. No, you just swallow it like a pill, but still it is bitter. So, you, I can guarantee you one hundred percent that you will never ever get addicted to it. <laughs> See, look at the advantage of that. <laughs> because Unconscious ways of existence is taking a huge toll on humanity. This happened. One day Shankaran Pillai went to his doctor and he said, Doctor, I'm having toilet problems. Those of you standing up, you having? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Don't look at them, come on. Have allowed that much privacy. <laughs> so, what is the problem? Why you are not able to urinate? What's happening? He said, no doctor, when I… morning like clockwork, six o'clock I always pee. Like clockwork, I don't miss it a single day. Then what is it? You have problems with your bowel movement? No, no, no problem at all. Exactly at seven o'clock, like clockwork, it always happens. Then what is the toilet problem you have? He said, the problem is I only wake up at eight o'clock <laughs> hmm? So, 
that's a toilet problem. <laughs> right now, that is the problem with humanity. Things are happening compulsively. So moving towards conscious life, there are many tools and supports. Well, being on a twenty-year or twenty… twenty-year or more, but first eighteen, twenty years, I was uh, only trying to build goodwill for the Analinga. Once that was done, I thought, I'm done. But then, here I am. So last twenty years has been mainly campaign to get people's attention by doing masala, by doing this and <laughs> that. Because, you know, if you can enter spiritual process through neem and turmeric, it's part of the masala, you know, turmeric is part of the masala, so it's half masala <laughs> So people have entered spiritual seeking and, you know, longing for spiritual process through so many means, entertainment, backache, headache, this, that, family problems, all kinds of things, because usually, traditionally that's how it's believed. If you tell someone, I'm living in an ashram, so what went wrong? <laughs> they think you must be having either wife problem or husband problem, at least mother-in-law problem, something you have. That is why you're at the ashram. They can't believe you're well and you're here. <laughs> you must have some problem, maybe financial problem, something to an extent where certain media, segments of media, started uh, at one time campaigning that people with all kinds of criminal records are gathering in Isha Yoga Center. <laughs> then uh, we had to go about showing that nobody has a criminal record here <laughs> I'm saying something must be wrong in your life, otherwise why are you living in ashram? So that has been the unfortunate nature of the general understanding that something must be wrong, no. Do not wait for something to go wrong. Hello? Do not wait for something to go wrong. When everything is well, you must push… If you want to climb the highest peak, you must do it when you're at your best or when you're shaking with uh, Mr. Parkinson. Hello? I'm asking you <laughs> Before Mr. Parkinson's knocks on your door, you must be very stable and well. Huh? If he's knocked in our neighbor's home, don't think he will not come to us. Hello? It's foolish to think, oh, it happened to him, maybe bad karma, you know? <laughs> not me. Nothing like that. He can knock on anybody's door. Hello? Yes or no? He can knock on anybody's door. At least Mr. Parkinson gets you into your shake. You know, at one time in seventies, there was something called as shake dance. So, it is still not too much suffering, I am saying. There are other misters and misses who can cause enormous pain and suffering. Hello? There are other… others who are far more. So, it is not with the fear of disease, ailment, death, that you do spiritual process with the wisdom that this is mortal. Right now you have been given a physical and psychological platform. How to make the best out of this as a life? This is what spiritual process is about. Right now there is a, pub, uh, there is a platform upon which you have a discretionary mind, you can decide. Once you lose this, you have no discretion. Nature will decide what should happen to you. As it was for other creatures, nature decides what should happen to them. You have come to a space where you can decide what should happen to you. Once again, once you lose the body, nature decides what should happen to you. If you think it's best that way, it's up to you. But I think the privilege that a human being has is discretion. I can decide how to sit, how to breathe, how to be, how to think, how to feel, what to do with this life. This is the greatest privilege that a human being has, isn't it? If you give this up, well, 
you could have wi lived with much less trouble being a raccoon. <laughs> He's quite a ingenious guy, I've been watching this guy. <laughs> he is quite something, huh? Really, he is really something. And he's eco-friendly. <laughs> so ingenious, so industrious, but still eco-friendly. We have not even figured that out, isn't it? So, I want every one of you, wherever you are right now, with this darshan having online reach, wherever you are right now, please spend a little time looking at this. I know right now with bodily compulsions, mental things, social things, financial things will keep you busy, 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 busy till they're lowering you into your pit or burning you up. Don't wait till that day. It's very important to understand a life which was a worm or an insect or an animal has evolved into a place where it has discretion, it can… it can decide. It can decide how to conduct everything. And this privilege is there only for a brief amount of time. See, you're alive only for a very brief amount of time. You will be dead for a very long time. Yes. Hello? You will be dead for a very, very long time. This life is only brief, this is the only place where you have the necessary discretion as to how to conduct myself. If you want to conduct yourself well, one fundamental is you must have stable platforms. Your body and your mind never an issue. They are never in the way of what you aspire. They must always be a stable, exuberant platform. Otherwise, you are defeating the purpose of being human. You are defeating the fundamental purpose of being human. These millions of years of evolutionary work, this fantastic <laughs> If you uh, just look at it from a single-celled amoeba to where you are, is it a simple amount of work, huh? Can you even imagine the complexity of what's happened and what this can do now? So, let's make it happen. Spirituality is not about going to heaven, it's about making this into a heaven. poem for you <laughs> because uh, uh, last night, uh, maybe around uh, just after midnight, I was looking at something and uh, then I realized uh, for all the babies who are coming for the darshan, we don't have a poem. So I wrote this in the middle of the night, just uh, in two minutes, I just scribbled something. It's called Cake in a Glass Case. Cake in a Glass Case. Have you seen Cake in a Glass Case? Oh, come on, most of the time you see cake, cakes in glass cases, isn't it? Someone loves you. Love is in the air. God is love. Someone loves you. Love is in the air. God loves… Uh, God is love, unless love sprouts in your heart are all like cake in a glass case. Unless love sprouts in your heart are all like cake in a glass case. Make your… can make your mouth water but shall never nourish you can make your mouth water but shall nev never nourish you. So all the things that we think are most valuable, hmm, 
love, joy, blissfulness, ecstasy, balance must happen within us, isn't it so? See right now, though planet is spinning and going around and there is no lanes drawn, no stop signals, no stop signs, any asteroid, anybody can come and hit. Anything can happen in the traject… in the movement of the planet. But is it doing its job very stable? Hello? Yes. See, it's spinning and moving, you don't even feel it. Hello? You don't even feel it. So, everything else is doing its job. It's only the human being not able to handle their own intelligence. That's their main problem. The main problem is most human beings have not been trained how to handle their own intelligence. They think it's a tool to poke themselves all the time. Or if they find somebody, of course, they'll poke them. <laughs> there is marriage. I'm just being mean, hello, it's okay. See, if you are dating, one poke, they're gone. <laughs> Marriage means committed poking. <laughs> Can't go anywhere. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice arrangement, otherwise how? I'm not against it, it's, I'm just saying it's a good arrangement because you still have a need. That's how you are, it's fine. But at least you must see that's how I am, how to be beyond that. This has to come. So we've been throwing these things out. Oh, someone loves me. See, right now you think someone loves you. Hello? So right now, a whole lot of people who have had a string of uh, bad experiences, now they've started this, it starts from California usually, and now they're saying, the universe loves me. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> because they're feeling little uh, uncomfortable saying, God loves me. Here there's no problem, we here in Tennessee, we say, God loves us. <laughs> but in California, they're saying, universe loves us. Uh, I'm telling you, whoever loves you makes no difference. If you are loving, it makes a world of difference. Hello? Oh, she ate the cake, he ate the cake, he, she ate the cake, he ate the cake. Makes any difference for me? No, I ate the cake. Hello? <laughs> I may be happy that you ate the cake, but will not nourish me, isn't it? Only if I ate the cake, it nourishes me. This is something that's completely missed. Love is in the air, so what? Core of the universe is love, some people are saying. Okay, it's in the core of the universe, so what I'm asking? It may be anywhere, makes no difference. It's in your heart, makes a world of difference. Hmm? Let's make it happen, eh? there if you promise that you won't sneeze.
happens to dead people? Do they become ghosts? Do they haunt houses? Do they possess you? Sadhguru demystifies the dead. When a person dies and his information is not done, his prarabdha is not done, then life is still vibrant but body is gone. Whatever karmic substance which is still not dissolved, which will form a certain type of tendency, will drive it in certain directions. There are many aspects to it. If I say these things, you will start imagining things tonight. Watch Disembodied Beans, a six-part series only on Sadhguru Exclusive.